you guys, welcome to a new episode of Food and the Single Guy with me, your very own Amaru. Now on this episode of Food and the Single Guy, I am going to cook something from the homeland yet again. But before we get on with the cooking, I have a couple of church announcements. I have a new music video out. Now yesterday I did, or the day before yesterday, I did an episode of my web talk on my other channel, Amaru Online. And in that episode of Web Talk, I elaborate on the new single Low on the Dough and the very simple but basic yet very to the point concept of this new music video, which is uploaded on the Amaru Music YouTube channel. Because as you may well know, I have three YouTube channels. This one, Food and the Single Guy, Amaru Online, and Amaru Music. As I explained to you a couple of videos ago, Amaru Music is still in development and your subscription would mean the world to me because I think I have 20 subscribers on that channel. I'm trying to grow the official Amaru Music label YouTube channel. All right, so that's that. I was minding my own business the other day at the supermarket and I needed some assistance, right? So there were three ladies standing at the cheese counter. So I asked one of them, I said, listen, I need such and such an uh, articles, uh, item. Can you show me where it is? And she said, sure. So as I'm approaching the item, here comes this other lady that they were talking with. I think she works at the supermarket, but she wasn't dressed in her uniform. So I walk to the aisle where I needed to, you know, get my stuff. And this young lady rushed up to me, towards me, and she's like, aren't you that guy that does the YouTube videos on, you know, about Surinamese cooking and all of that? I'm like, uh-huh. You know, so we ended up talking and then she said her mother-in-law always tells her if you want to cook something the traditional Surinamese way, you go to Food and the Single Guy, aka Amaru, first. All right. So I promised her that I was going to give her and her mother-in-law a proper shout out. So I am shouting out Nicole and her mother-in-law, Micah. Thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for your support, and thank you for talking to me at the supermarket. I love stuff like that. Okay, you guys, as I mentioned earlier on this video, I'm going to show you how to make a traditional dish yet again from the homeland, and it's called moksa lazy or moksi alesi. But because we contract those two words, we say moksa lazy. Moksi means to mix, alesi means rice. Now, you don't necessarily need specific ingredients to make this dish. You could make a moksa lazy with the leftovers from last week or the week before that you kept in the freezer. You add rice, water, and or coconut milk, and you're good to go. 25 minutes later, you're feeding your family. Yes, boo Stick around to find out because anybody can make a moksa lazy. Now, in the Caribbean, in certain parts of the Caribbean, I think this is called cook up rice. So if you're from the Caribbean and you're familiar with the term cook up rice, I think you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not sure if it's similar to the Jamaican rice and peas, but it's something, it's a something similar but not quite but the the cooking process is somewhat similar let me put it that way in my country we have a variety of staple moksa laces. for instance your bitawiri moksa lacy, which is what I'm gonna cook today you have your pumpkin moksa lacy. you have your black eyed peas moksa lacy. you have your anitriberi which is I mean I have a recipe of anitriberi right here on my channel you have your bachao moksa lacy, which is made with salted fish honey let me tell you and we in my country we are very big on our one pan dishes this is a traditional one pan dish from my country and I'm gonna make the bitawiri variation of moksa lacy. Now, bita means bitter, wiri means hair, or it also means a bushel of, of herbs that you pick from the, from the yard, from the garden, all right? So in my native Creole language, there are words that have more than one meaning. So bitter, greens, that is what I'm gonna use to make this moksa lazy with. So, I'm gonna list all the ingredients in the information box below the video for your convenience, all right? Now let us get on with the cooking because I have talked too much but that's what I do I talk not because I want to talk but I talk because I want to teach you something I'm trying to put my country on the map here so I have to give you the backstory all right 
Let's get on with it. So these are my bitter greens in my country, also known as Bitawiri. And a couple of videos ago, I have shown you how to clean, how to prepare these vegetables before cooking. I'm gonna put the link to that video in the description box below this video, so you can go ahead and check that out once again in case you haven't already. What I'm also gonna add in the description box is a link to a little bit more about these vegetables because I have lived in a couple of countries, I've traveled a lot, and I have never seen these vegetables in any of those countries. So I would like to think that this is innate to my country, my native country, the Republic of Suriname, but I am not sure. So if you are familiar with these vegetables, let me know, okay? This is not Kalalu, it is not related to Kalalu, all right? So, like I said, a couple of videos ago, I have shown you how to clean these vegetables, how to prepare them. And basically what you do, you take the leaf, just like so, and then you pinch it in the middle, and then you simply remove the thick, veiny part in the middle, because you want to end up with, this is what you want to end up with. You see what I'm talking about, you guys? And this is the part of the vegetable that you're going to use, all right? So, let me show you one more time. Just like so. Gently. And that's it. See? Now this part right here, right here at the top, this is the youngest part of the vegetable, of the plant. And it's not very hard, it's very succulent, it's very tender. You can just go ahead and break that apart, just like so and cook it as is. Now, let me go ahead and continue because this is a lot of work. I don't want to bore you with that. It's very tedious. And then I'm going to come back and then we're going to continue cooking this fabulous dish. Let me give you a closer look of this vegetable because as you can see, <laughs> it has very, very strong, very thick branches. Okay? And, um, I am almost certain that these are from my country because the ones that they sell up here, as I told you earlier, they don't have these um, almost stem-like branches. So um, I just wanted to give you a closer look. This is what they look like. And um, gosh, this takes me back. And again, if, you, if, you, if you're familiar with this, if you recognize this, let me know, all right? All right, you guys, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna wash the vegetables. And trust me when I tell you that, even though this may look like a lot, it is going to reduce like crazy. So now we're gonna set the greens to one side to drain completely. Okay, you guys, so you've seen this done a thousand times before. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna saute the onion, the garlic, and the tomato, and the scotch bonnet pepper. We're gonna saute all of that goodness in a droplet of oil. Now, as you can see, I'm not using a ton of oil. It's just a droplet because we're using the smoked chicken. And the smoked chicken has a tendency to generate extra fat, extra oil. We're gonna allow the onions and the garlic to take on some color before we add the rest of the ingredients, all right? And as you can see, I've also added my scotch bonnet pepper. What I'm gonna add next, two chicken stock cubes. Just like this. We're gonna give that a nice stir. And next what we're going to add is the smoked chicken. So now we're going to cover the pan and we're going to turn down the heat to medium and allow this to simmer for anywhere between 7 to 10 minutes. 
Okay, so it's been about eight minutes. Let's check on the chicken. Oh yes, this is looking good. So next what I'm gonna add are the vegetables. Just like this. Just like so. And you want to add a little bit at a time. We're going to give that a quick stir. everybody so this is looking good it is smelling good what we're gonna add next is the coconut milk we're gonna give that a nice stir and you're gonna allow this to simmer on medium heat for about five minutes okay you guys so this has been cooking for about five minutes what we're gonna add next is the rice which I have here and as you can see, I've also added the water because you need some water to cook the rice with. All right? Now we're going to add the water and the rice to the pan. And we're going to give this a good stir because you want to mix the rice and the vegetables and the meat very thoroughly. And I know it doesn't look very glamorous right now, you guys, but trust me when I tell you, when it's done, you're gonna be drooling, okay? So next, what we're gonna do, we're gonna allow this to come to a boil, we're gonna allow this to cook, and as soon as the water has evaporated, we're gonna turn down the heat, we're gonna cover the pan, and we're gonna allow the rice to continue to steam for anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, you guys, see what I mean? The water has almost completely been evaporated. So next what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our cover and we're gonna cover this pan and turn down the heat and allow this rice to steam for another 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, you guys, so it's been about 15 minutes and as you can see, the rice is looking good. It is still a little wet. So we're gonna allow this to continue to steam on low heat for an additional 10 minutes maybe and when it's all done I'm gonna present to you a delicious plate of Bitawiri Moksi Alesi yes baby and there you have it you guys my delicious Bitawiri Moksi Alesi as you can see it is still steaming away nicely what we're gonna add to the plate are a couple of slices of fried ripe plantain just like so you may also add your hot sauce of choice or some pickled cucumber or whatnot and chow down. And there you have it you guys my delicious Bitawiri Moksa Lazy and I can tell you this much it was delicious with a capital D and a capital E-licious. Oh yeah! Now if you decide to try this recipe let me know how it turned out because I'm always interested in hearing from you. In the meantime don't forget to purchase my album Champagne Attitude either the special collector's edition printed on linen very fancy or the commercial edition with the um, full color high gloss jacket. All right, now let me tell you something. My album is getting rave reviews and for a non-mainstream, very independent artist, that is good news. I guarantee you that you will jam to at least five of these songs, okay? So go ahead, if you want the CD, you go to the link that I provide in the description box below the video. And if you want the digital album, you're going to go to your iTunes and your CD Baby and all of those platforms, all right? Now, I want to take this opportunity to welcome a couple of new subscribers to the channel. Your subscription means everything to me because without you, there is no cooking channel or any channel for that matter. So welcome new subscribers. 
Thank you for being here, um, long time subscribers. Thank you for the support and all of that beautiful stuff. And again, if you have any questions, comments, or thoughts, you know how to get in touch with me. All right? Thank you for watching. Happy cooking, happy eating. Don't add crazy to the craziness, and I will see you soon. Bye.